Hey guys, it is Briar Trout here and welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. So today we are finally going through the model horse confessions that you guys submitted to me. So last week I posted on my Instagram story as well as on the community tab on YouTube sharing a link with you guys to a forum where you guys could anonymously submit a story or pretty much anything model horse related. We're able to share your name if you wanted to but it was also able to be anonymous. So I've I made two of these in the past a few years ago. And at some point over the past week or so, multiple people were asking me about doing these videos again. I'm pretty sure that other model horse YouTubers have done this like somewhat recently. So maybe that's why like it got brought back up again. So yeah, I did this a few years ago. It was a lot of fun and I'm excited to do it again today. So I honestly have not even gone through them, but there are so many, a lot more than I was expecting. So there's no way that I'm going to be going through all of them today, but I am going to be pulling a few. And then if you guys would like a part two of this video, then I could definitely make that happen. So let's get started with going through your model horse confessions. So the first story that we are kicking it off with is an anonymous one so it says when i started collecting i didn't know that models could get scratched or rubbed i was 12 or 13 at the time i wanted to get cool photos of my three regular runs my favorite models at the time like i had seen model horse collectors do so i threw them all in a bag and went to take photos when i got back home i opened the bag to find all three models rubbed and scratched from being jumbled around in the bag looking back now i cringe i feel like we all gotta learn this lesson the hard way <laughs> And it was definitely good that you figured them out with regular runs. Sometimes models really do shock me with how durable they could be, but also how delicate at the same time. But hopefully you were able to fix up some of those rubs and scratches and hopefully you got some cool photos out of it. Next up is a confession by Briar Boom. And they said, I know I touch my glossies a lot, even when I know I'm not supposed to. I just like the feeling and I'm afraid I will break off the tail if I just hold them by the tail. Okay, I read this one and honestly, I touch my glossy models. Not, I don't know like the rules and regulations when it comes to it. I know maybe just like the residue on your hand can just like affect the gloss, but I personally see no problem with it. I know there's probably other people that feel differently. And I mean, like I'm just looking at Sierra's rose right here and I don't know like I I don't I don't want to say I like touch them all the time but I'm not afraid to touch them. If somebody would like to explain to me in the comments why I shouldn't be touching my glossy models I would honestly love to hear it because I don't know I, I probably will keep on doing it but maybe just avoid touching them as often. Next up is a confession by Bombay Briars and they said I bought my very first custom a Bloody Bay Spirit about four years or so ago now. And my aunt came over to visit a few days after he'd arrived. She was asking me about my collection and my models and wanted to see the custom, so I took him off the shelf. She liked him and I thought we were all good until she looked at me and said, Do you sleep with it? I stared at her, the real life version of these emojis, and said, What? And she said, Do you sleep with it? Or any of them? Or do they take turns? I told her no and she never brought up my collection or models again. I'm still confused to this day. I am confused as well. Like, I'm guessing that she thought that like it's like a stuffed animal to you. But like, I I can't imagine a, a, like a hard plastic model being comfortable to sleep with. Also, they got like ears that I feel like could get you pretty good if you, uh, you lay on them the wrong way, but that's weird. Next up is a confession by Messy Mare Creations. And she said, when I was like seven, I had a fascination with putting things in the microwave that shouldn't be microwaved. Oh boy. <laughs> I microwaved a classic briar horse that had a broken leg to see what would happen. And it literally melted on one side and was all caved in. Truly terrifying. I so wish that I could see a picture of this. I just cannot even imagine how like your house melt after that like just burning plastic and yeah just the sight of it like oh I could not even imagine this confession by uno dot edits just says I broke a briar's leg off and glued the leg to the head it was a stable mate sorry okay this next one is a dream based one from plastic pony collectors on instagram and i love hearing about model horse related dreams so here it goes one time i had a very vivid dream about searching for a mariposa in four 
it's these models. I'm saying their names wrong. I went around my town to every store that sold briars and searched for them, but I could not find them. I went to the last store and when I walked in, they had shelves and shelves of models. Not all of them were regular ones either. I walked down one row and they had a bunch of one of a kind models and a lot of them were one of a kind Dakota models. I was obsessed and found a few that I loved. One was a very light dapple gray. I went to pick it up and the price tag banged down and it was $13,000. I carefully put it back and just stared in awe at the gorgeous one-of-a-kind model that the store had. In the end, I was able to find Mariposa and Floor and in my dream, and when I woke up, I was very disappointed that it was only a dream. I've had multiple dreams where I have walked into random stores that are just completely fi like filled with model like extremely rare models yeah that disappointment that you feel when you wake up and you know that it's not real okay this one is more of a vent it is anonymous and it just says the inflation in the hobby is getting ridiculous i just have to say it and oh, i feel like we are all feeling inflation <laughs> um right now and yeah it it definitely hit the hobby. I mean, it got really crazy a few years ago and I feel like it's slowly coming back down, but I don't know. I have a feeling that it's really gonna start coming back down because people are just not buying models. Like everybody I hear is just having an extremely hard time selling models. So I'm sure there'll be more getting deals and stuff. When it comes to getting models directly from like the manufacturers like Briar or Stone or like whatever i feel like that one we can't really help as much because that's just like supply costs and i don't really know what we could do about that this next one's cute it's anonymous uh and they said it's a little embarrassing but last year i attended my first ever live model horse show and it was held at my state's 4-h horse show there's only a handful of people there showing, but they were very talented with all their tack and props. When I got there, I was looking around. I see everyone unwrapping their models from various cloths and bubble wrap. Meanwhile, I just pulled the two I brought out of a small clear plastic container, fully tacked, no bubble wrap. I hope I didn't give anyone a heart attack because my horses weren't wrapped up and just thrown into a container. From the sound of it, it sounds like your models were fine. I feel like you would have mentioned if they were damaged. But you know what? You gotta learn somehow. And it was your first show. And especially a 4-H show, I feel like the whole point of those is to just really learn. You know, everybody starts somewhere. Okay, this one looks juicy. This one is from rosemary.models.horses. And here we go. It looks like there's two separate ones, but they're Briarfest related. First one was that I was in the Clarion and there was a massive premier club conga on a shelf and some kid knocked them all down everyone in the room went absolutely silent and the room owner told them to get out core briar press memory oh my god i could not imagine being in the room when that happened like i could just the, the like energy definitely just got sucked completely out of the room and then we have i was in line at the briar store 2022 and i realized that my christmas horse had a giant scratch so my mom held our place in line while I replaced it. So basically I was squeezing back through the line and apologizing to everybody I went by because I'm a people pleaser to get to my mom when all of a sudden this agitating old man was like, no, you're not. You're not sorry. Excuse me? <laughs> like who even are you? You and your big age complaining about a teenage girl just trying to get back in line with her mom. To make matters worse, air went down so you could only pay with exact cash. Nobody had exact cash, so we were waiting in line forever. This same old man was being so rude to the poor store employee and literally ruining the entire experience. He was like cussing them out and stuff. Sir, you cannot control what Square does. Anyway, those are my confessions. More like Briarfest incidences. I am no longer a teenager, but I'm still a younger girl. And just when older people in general and in the hobby when they are like specifically going after like me or other hobbyists that are like half their age and in this case it sounds like this person was about three times your age it just it like baffles my mind like you're really like getting mad and like talking smack or like doing whatever about like me like i'm just i'm just a girl and people are just so agitating. Like, I hate people that are rude to, like, service employees or retail employees or just any employees in general. I've never worked retail or anything. I guess I've sort of worked, like, in the service industry. And I worked in government parks and recreation. And let me tell you, 
the old men that I would encounter. But like, I just, I do not understand the people that want to go around and just like be angry at the world and try and make everybody else miserable and make everybody's lives so much harder. It's just the little comments of like, no, you're not, you're not sorry. Like, ew. People do not understand that like, sometimes it is just model horses, so calm down. But that is crazy. Thank you so much for submitting these confessions. <laughs> okay, we're going to do two more. And it is really hard going through and picking one. So I have a feeling that I'm going to have to do a part two of this where I will post this confession form again so that more people could submit. But let's do the second to last one. So this person is anonymous. He said, I mentioned to my dad about the horse Lafayette that I found at a reasonable price for $94. But he said that was very expensive for a plastic horse. So I told him he plays pool that it's outrageous that pool people play thousands of dollars for a wooden stick. But I mentioned it to my mom and eventually she let me buy it. I haven't told my dad and I'm not planning to because he would probably be mad. That makes me so upset for you. But I just want to tell you that one day you are going to be a grown adult and you are going to be able to purchase whatever models you want without anybody's permission. And it is an amazing thing. I'm very thankful that my parents were pretty cool about me deciding what to spend my own money on. But especially in the beginning of my collecting, there definitely was some pushbacks when I wanted to start buying more expensive models that were over $50. And it took some convincing. But honestly, good comeback on your part because it's true. There are things that everybody pays for and pays what seems like an outrageous price to other people but are very reasonable for people that are actually in that hobby that they're in or sport or just whatever. I just want to say just know one day this is not going to be a problem for you and you know what he doesn't deserve to know. Okay we are ending it off with a longer one but it looked good, so I thought this was a good one to end on. This person said, when I was 12, I created my model horse Instagram account and I didn't have any way of buying model horses because I didn't have PayPal or anything like that. So basically I could only trade model horses. I met a girl on Instagram and I had an arrangement with her that I would trade my Lakota, the tractor supply model, and my chocolate chip kisses for her journeyman. She ended up scamming me and accusing me of stealing someone else's sample run of chocolate chip kisses. But then that person who is pretty well known in the model horse hobby believed the scammer and blocked me. I'm still blocked by that person today and I have all the screenshots from multiple accounts the scammer had. Also screenshots of the Lakota and the chocolate chip kisses on her shelves. I think about this all the time and it makes me so nervous to trade. Anyway, make sure that they have references. She also wanted to add that that person lied about her house burning down and lied about crashing her truck. Okay, so this story is a lot, but like, this is all just like crazy. Basically, I understand being nervous to trade because honestly, I get nervous to trade with people that I don't personally know. There's model horse transaction boards for a reason. And luckily I've met a lot more nice people in the hobby than not nice. <laughs> so I'm sure that you will find people to trade with when you want to trade again. And something that I always prefer to do is that if I am going to be trading and we're both going to Briarfest, then we just trade in person at Briarfest. And that way it takes out the whole risk of the post office and risk of accountability, just everything. I feel like everybody in the hobby has at least one scammer story, so at least you got yours out of the way now. But I cannot believe that you could like see the model in like their Instagram posts. Like that is just an awful feeling to have. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm so sorry if I did not get to your story. There were seriously so many and I was kind of picking at random. So if you guys have more confessions that you would like, then please let me know in the comments and I could post up that form again and maybe next month I'll do another one. If you want to leave any confessions down below, feel free and subscribe for more model horse content. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and most importantly, stay fabulous. Bye guys.